Okay, here we go. Check it out. This is my new mango, mango area. Mango factory. I'll just call it the mango factory. Mango factory, what do you think? Um, all right, so I've got these big pots. I had, what did I have here? Can't even remember. I was gonna put a big giant yucca rostrata here. It'd look really cool. Wouldn't need much water. But then uh, I had a different idea. Then I've had this <laughs> Charisia tree here for so long. I had one over there, but it died. This one's just been hanging in here and it's got this really funny, cool shape to it. I just, I mean, look at that. How artistic is that, right? But um, now I'm like, okay, I'm gonna change course uh, here. Do something much more intriguing. I should have done a long time ago. And that is to plant the mangoes here. I'm gonna rip out all these uh, agaves and some of this aloe aristata, I believe that's called. And um, I'm gonna get all this out of here and clear these pots, maybe put a little fresh soil and get the drip lines running again, make, uh, make the drip system great again. There it is. Clean it all up. And then I'm gonna plant these mangoes. I'm gonna plant four of them. Right now I've got two of them up here just kind of acclimatizing. My daughter decided to put a big bag over them, big clear bag, thinking she was making a greenhouse, and she just completely killed the top because it cooked. But you need to do that anyway. You got to cut the top off anyway. And she did the same thing to this one. That's why the top's missing on this one. Um, so what do we have here? We have, I'm going to get two more from my nursery down in San Diego and bring them up. And I'm going to have like a lot of different varieties here, at least seven trees, three in the ground outside. But what do we have here? This one is Valencia Pride. Right here, there she is, Valencia Pride. This is a really good one. In fact, I have some fruit inside. I'll show you those. They're really good. And uh, this one over here, it's kind of a long, narrow leaf, you know, real pretty leaf. And then this one, look at, oh, this one's got the wavy, wider leaf. Very different, very different. Um, this one's called Carrie, which is kind of fun because my wife's name is Kari. It's the closest mango I could find, Kari. And uh, it's a semi-dwarf. It doesn't really show that yet because this one's actually bigger than this one. Um, but the reason I wanted to show you this before I have it all set up is because it is the middle of winter. And uh, it's like January 28th, I think. In fact, the Niners are... Uh, are you still playing in there? Oh, the screen went dead. Um I'm watching the Niner game for the championship. Hopefully they'll win and go to the Super Bowl. But they're playing against, uh, oh, God, I don't even know. <laughs> That's pretty bad, huh? But, yeah, so the point is, though, it's middle of winter. And look, the carry is throwing growth. This has all happened during winter, showing that this plant is totally active and happy out here. And uh, this one over here is throwing some buds. Those are kind of new. Uh, I truthfully wouldn't even expect this here in the winter, but it's happening. But I certainly wouldn't expect a full-on, like, flush of growth in the middle of winter out here. Um, but it, what it does is it shows you how beneficial this spot is up here. So you can see we are well above the valley floor of Lafayette, California. It's way down there. We're at 630-foot elevation. The creek at the bottom is probably 300 feet lower. And then it even goes lower, you know, the further that way you go, the creek runs this way. Moraga's that way. Um, you can look at the microclimate that we have. So we have really good cold air drainage because of the elevation. But also, look at that, uh, that fake lawn down there. <laughs> I used to be like, so like, no, there's no way I'm having fake lawn. And then I just got, I'm like, you know what? Bring me the fake lawn. I'm so tired of mowing and weeds and fertilizer and chemicals. And no, <laughs> no more. But what's great about the fake lawn is it makes it much warmer. That could be a detriment in the summertime. But in the winter, it the microclimate down there is so much warmer. And you got to believe that's happening at night too. Um, and um, we have all the sunlight. Uh, sunrise comes up, moves across the sky in the wintertime. There's the afternoon sun over there right now. It gets sun out here all day. Now look, it's a big C shape. So the heat gets trapped. It's radiated. These windows radiate the heat and the light. We have all kinds of uh, hardscape with all the stucco is cements. So that's a really good thermal mass. This is, this, is, this is arguably warm right now. That's real warm right there. 
So that's why I put these right next to the wall because they're feeling that heat coming off the wall. But uh, this is facing south. This has been in the sun all day. That feels noticeably warm. It feels good in my hand. December 20 or January 28th. The ambient temperature today is probably about 65 degrees out here. But with that sunlight hitting all of these surfaces, this tile, good heat sink, um, you know, it's just ideal. And you think about it, you got two walls radiating that heat at night. Even when it's uh, 50 degrees out for a high and 20 for a low, this is still going to be a lot warmer because you're still going to get heat capture relative to cold, to air temperature. And uh, when it's 20 degrees out, if it, that will ever happen here again, which it probably won't, this little area here will probably be like 26, 27. Whereas like here in the middle, it'll be like, you know, two or three degrees cooler, you know, down there, even colder. And then, of course, down in the valley, it'd be like 18 degrees. But um, yeah, so I just wanted to show you like how in Northern California, you, these pots are big enough to make a really big tree here with lots of fruit. I have little trees half this size that have fruit on them down in San Diego. I got to pull the fruit off. People ask me, you know, what size will they fruit at? I said, well, they'll fruit right away if they're grafted. And these are grafted. Um, but uh, yeah, so the pots over there are a little smaller. These are a little bigger, but they're plenty big. I'm going to get these plants up here pretty soon. I'll make a video when I set it all up, clean the whole patio up. It's kind of a mess right now, kind of nasty, but uh, it's winter time. We don't come out here too much this time of year. Probably should because it feels really good. Like it just like the mangoes do. Um, that's uh, what I'm going to be doing. And uh, yeah, so in Northern California, if, you'd like, if you can just, these things will grow pretty much anywhere in Southern California. Um, you know, like uh, in the zone 23, 24, you know, not too far from the coast. Uh, maybe some cold pockets you got to watch out for. But um, but up here to mitigate, you know, to to emulate that, all you need is just a little bit of a boost for a microclimate boost, and this is all you need: a nice hot wall, just like that, and you've boosted yourself into the next climate zone, at least in this area right here. Let's go look at this fruit real quick. Why not? We're here. I should have brought it out here to you. Let's go see what we have. Processing all of my Meyer lemons to sell to the uh, local store down the street. And then here are these really nice um, Valencia Pride mangoes. We had a really late, uh, really cold winter and spring and summer, which caused the California mangoes to be really slow to develop. And they eventually did. And uh, it took forever that, for them to ripen. And I just picked these about two weeks ago. And they're now just delicious. They're really good, nice and soft. So I just had some last night. Trust me. But anyway, that's it. That's how you get your mango scrolls. These are Southern California grown in the San Diego mountains and just out, you know, not next to a building or anything. And so in order to emulate that climate, all you need is that, that, that warm sort of uh, balcony or a courtyard feeling like that with some heat sinks around it, a lot of sunshine hitting it. And then you have basically created the same microclimate in that spot as these uh, produced all this fruit down in San Diego, just on the hillsides. And that's it. There you go. Come on down and get some mangoes.